Hi everyone, George Christie here with Wine Industry Network. Welcome to another edition of the Win Educational Webinar Series. Today's webinar is sponsored by Atlas Copco and it's titled, The Price Benefits of On-Site Nitrogen. It's a very good presentation. I think you're gonna enjoy it very much. Presenting today, we've got Paul Humphreys and he's gonna be joined by Peter Eschini. And as is always the case, we pre-record these a few days in advance and we do that for quality purposes. But we also do it because we want to create the opportunity for as much engagement as possible. So to that point, as you're watching the presentation, as questions come to you, go ahead and submit those questions because Paul and Peter are watching this broadcast live just like you are. So you don't need to wait till the end of the presentation to submit those. They'll be looking for those questions and picking them off as they come in. So take advantage of that. I think that about covers it. Once again, I want to thank Atlas Copco for their support. I want to thank you for taking the time to be with us. And of course, I want to thank Paul and Peter for taking the time to put together this presentation. Paul, why don't you take it away? Thank you very much, George, and thank you everyone for joining us today. I'm Paul Humphreys. I'm the communications manager for Atlas Copco uh, in the United States. Uh, and I'm joined today by our resident expert, especially when it comes to all things nitrogen and all things when it comes to vineyards. So Peter, good afternoon to you. Hi there, Paul. How are you? Yeah, great. Thank you, Peter. So we've got a lot to cover <coughs> for these folks. So we'll just jump yeah. straight in, if, if that's OK uh, with you. And I'll go down on the slide here. So many are familiar, but, but just talk to us a little bit about some of the applications for nitrogen within wineries and vineyards. Certainly, yeah. And I, I think the, the key here is that what we're trying to do is eliminate oxygen. Um, uh, in many of the different processes in in the the winemaking um, well, winemaking process, so sparging, bottling, transferring a product are all three of uh, probably the major um, applications that uh, that we're using nitrogen or an inert gas for. So, sparging, we're just bubbling inert gas through the wine, trying to get rid of any suspended oxygen that uh, that could be present uh, in that in that liquid. And then, of course, bottling. Um, before you put in the product, you're going to have 21% oxygen, which is what's in the atmosphere inside that bottle. So uh, we're evacuating <clears throat> that oxygen uh, with the use of uh, with nitrogen, in some cases argon, and then in the transfer process where we're pushing this uh, um, with pushing the wine from uh, vessel to vessel or vessel to some packaging. So uh, there are some other applications that... Uh, uh, individual wineries may use, but those, those Paul, are the three major ones. And when it comes to getting rid of oxygen and, and ultimately using nitrogen for that purpose, there's, of course, a couple of ways to do it. So <clears throat> let's talk about, if you like, the uh, the traditional way a little bit. So, of course, how many, uh, many companies, many vineyards do it today. So let's talk about delivered nitrogen, some of its benefits and, and some of its perhaps yeah. challenges too. Yeah, and I'd say uh, probably the easiest solution to pick up your phone and call a local gas company. Uh, you'll get nitro, you'll sign a nitrogen contract. Uh, you'll get that gas delivered to you uh, straight to your, your facility. Um, there's very little, if any, capital costs associated with uh, this method. Um, obviously no maintenance and, um, <clears throat> and it's easy. You know, it's a, it's a simple solution. And probably the, those things, you couple that all together. And that's a reason that um, when uh, companies are looking for uh, a deliver or looking for nitrogen, um, they turn to their gas companies. But uh, there's some problems. There's some issues with that that generation can solve that is uh, often a better uh, solution, a better way to handle things. And uh, I think one is uh, fixed costs. So with, with gas contracts, um, there's uh, always an escalation clause in those contracts. So the price that you're paying today isn't going to be the price uh, that you're paying by the time the contract ends. And uh, so those increases, um, you know, can affect your budgets and obviously take you potentially from a good situation, a good cost effective situation uh, to maybe a more expensive <clears throat> situation. Uh, we're seeing a lot of force majeures uh, these days, and that's uh, due to uh, delivery issues, uh, some scarcity of gas depends on where you're at in the country, but uh, the ability to be, for the gas company to be able to dramatically increase um, your gas contracts uh, you know, can be a, an issue, can be a real problem. 
Uh, and then uh, customers see other costs associated with that that maybe they hadn't uh, accounted for. Uh, in this case, we're talking a little bit about delivery, but delivery charges is only one of those fees. You can see hazmats, uh, fuel surcharges, gas or uh, tire surcharges, um, lots of other different creative ways to, uh, to uh, add costs to what uh, originally may have looked like a good solid uh, business case. Um, and then we're also seeing Paul miss deliveries and uh, in, in some cases when it gets extreme allocations of gas where, where, where the gas company may only allow a certain amount of uh, nitrogen to be delivered to the customer. And those all are very impactful on uh, production. And uh, obviously that's a, that's a high expense um, that, <clears throat> that, we're not, that the customer is not accounting for. And so is that really the most cost effective way to get your nitrogen? Uh, it may be the simplest way. It's just a phone call. Um, but uh, gas generation has proven to be a way more cost effective solution, especially in the wine industry. Yeah, and especially in the last couple of years, some of the supply chain disruptions. So there's some of the, let's say, the benefits, perhaps some of the challenges when it comes around delivered gases. Now, the first thing for some people that are perhaps unclear is we wanted to demonstrate what a an on-site system looks like. And we kind of joke, Peter, that most of the, the people we're talking to are probably already 50% of the way there when it comes to the equipment that they need. So just yeah. talk us through what, what you need to make your own nitrogen. Yeah, so it's kind of a misnomer. We talk about gas generation uh, because that's the terminology that's historically been used, but really it's separation. So we are taking the atmosphere, the air around us, the stuff we're breathing, and we're compressing it. So we need an air compressor. <clears throat> we need a dryer, some filtration. Uh, and then from there, we're separating out the gases that we want to keep and the gases that we want to get rid of. So for nitrogen generation, we're get, getting rid of oxygen, CO2 and water vapor and creating a nice clean uh, gas stream that we're sending out to the customer. And really, as you can see in this um, diagram, if you have an air compressor and you have proper filtration, you're looking at just adding an, a nitrogen system and maybe a tank for, um, for maybe some some peak demands or things like that, but not a whole lot of equipment, not a whole lot of floor space. Mm. Yeah, um, and then you talk a little bit about um, one of the questions we get, like um, oil-free compressors, oil injected, it's possible to generate your, your own nitrogen with either. It is, yeah, the, the equipment itself is does not care whether it's oil lubricated or oil-free. Uh, we put on the proper filtration uh, based on what the quality of that air is. Um, so. Uh, for us, it's it's unimportant. Um, usually, the uh, oil-free versus oil-lubricated decision comes from the customer, and that's based on uh, often what they're using in the plant uh, or what the industry is. So, semiconductor, uh, pharma, it's more mm. typical to use oil-free, but either way. Mm. So, you know, there's uh, the diagram. And then when we uh, have a look at now, you know, some of the extended benefits. So. <clears throat> We, we use the acronym PRICE because ultimately it's all about the ROI for the companies that are looking into it. But yeah. let's jump straight in and begin with P and, and, and explain to us, we're going to go in a bit more in depth at the end about what purity really means. But how does the purity that you make affect the price of your nitrogen? And from a gas company, can you get different purities or does it tend to be one? Yeah, so in, I guess maybe in reverse order, Paul. The purity that you get from a gas company, which is the amount of oxygen present, is relatively the same from uh, supplier to supplier. So it's usually a higher purity, meaning a lower volume of oxygen um, in that gas stream, but there's no way to modify it or control it. Generation, on the other hand, you control the purity that you need. And by reducing uh, the purity, which means adding a little more oxygen to your final gas stream without affecting the process or, the, or your product, you can create a situation where um, you're more cost effective. So lower purity equals a, a lower cost to operate and a smaller capital footprint. Mm. Uh, very, very clear. And then looking at the, the next one here, sort of reducing waste. Tell us about some of the waste challenges you can have in, in cylinders. 
Yeah, so in cylinders and uh, you can, we call it packaged gas. So if you look at the high pressure cylinders or you look at the portable liquid doers, there's always gas less left over uh, in those containers. And that's, you've paid for it. So you would, of course, uh, want to use it. That's the most efficient way, but there's always gas left in there. Uh, when the gas company comes and brings that, or comes and brings the uh, those cylinders back to their facility to refill, so it's not um, it's not as efficient as it as it could be, and there's no real way around it. And then uh, I'll say too that uh, when you look at bulk tanks, so those are those big white tanks typically that sit outside. Um, gas company comes and fills those. They are in a liquid form that you're converting to a gas, um, and they'll boil off at a rate of uh, upwards of 3%, it can be significantly higher than that, but at least around 3% of the volume in that tank every day. And that's a lot of waste. You already paid for it, but <clears throat> there's no way to recover it, so it vents back to atmosphere. And then going uh, the next one here, looking at the eye, so sort of increased safety. I mean, I know that you've been in a few applications and high pressure cylinders are just that, high pressure. Yeah, they're, uh, I know you want to call them a necessary evil, but if that's the source that you have there, I think, uh, you know, it, it would always be a concern for me. Um, I know we're looking always to try to be as safe as we can in, a, in our, our own facilities, as well as places that we go visit. And uh, I tend to want to stay away from high pressure cylinders. Um, they are under uh, a significant amount of pressure, up to 5,000 PSI, um, and that can be really dangerous. They're also pretty heavy, right? So for the people at the facility, if they are moving those around, um, that can create some issues. Um, and so, yeah, can we stay away from that? Uh, with gas generation, we eliminate high pressure cylinders. We eliminate having to move them around. And uh, we just produce that gas and, and put, push it out to your process. Um, Peter, the bottom point you've got there, smart link remote monitoring. Tell us a bit about that. One of my favorite features, by the way, of Atlas Copco equipment is SmartLink. It's uh, wireless remote monitoring. And so we have the ability, as does the customer, to be able to monitor um, conditions uh, on their equipment, whether it's a compressor, dryer, uh, nitrogen or oxygen generator. Uh, they can get alerts, lets them know if there's an alarm, and the alarm can be something as simple as uh, maintenance is required, or it could be something more uh, in-depth, meaning that there's a <clears throat> an alarm for, in this case, maybe a, a purity issue or something like that. But it's it's a great way for somebody who's not near the equipment to be able to know that there's a notification uh, or an alarm going on. And then further uh, is that our tech support can actually reach into that uh, controller see what's going on during that upset and often can diagnose and troubleshoot that equipment without ever stepping foot on, on site. So we have techs available, but obviously that's gonna be a fast response. So I do love SmartLink, I think it's awesome. Coming back a little bit to the cost, Peter, you know, when uh, on, on the sea and looking at this price acronym. So we got a couple of payback uh, samples that were shown, but you say here that like savings are never a guess, for example. What do we mean by that? Yeah, so we uh, will talk about uh, what we think your savings could or should be. But in practice, we need to know a lot of the specific conditions uh, of that install site. And we have uh, ROI calculators that we'll use. <clears throat> to be able to punch in the actual site conditions, kilowatts, size of equipment, et cetera, and come up with uh, what the actual savings is for gas generation, our Atlas Copco generators versus uh, a delivered gas source. And so a customer knows all the time exactly what that return on investment is, and they can make an informed decision on whether or not this is something they would want to invest in and move forward on. Mm -hmm. Uh, very good. And then lastly, some of the environmental benefit. I mean, just a couple here. I mean, of course, there's no no delivery, you know, so no reportable CO2 from transportation right. and you're not losing any gas to atmosphere. Yeah. So I think the big one these days is a lot of talk, of course, about your your, your carbon footprint and, and ways to reduce it. And while I'm not 100% convinced that somebody would purchase and install a nitrogen generator because 
uh, of that uh, reduced foot CO2 footprint, um, it is a benefit. And if we're not delivering gas, as you said, Paul, then there are no, tr there's no trucks on the road. There's no CO2 emissions from those trucks. And so you are immediately reducing your CO2, <laughs> CO2 footprint. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's take a look uh, here at a few uh, at a few other topics. And one of the things we, we like here when we talk about gas, you know, the difference between purity and cleanliness. And what we do, Peter, just for you explain it, I'm just going to pop on this uh, video here. Question. What is the difference between industrial gas purity and quality? Purity refers to the concentration of a gas. For example, nitrogen with a purity of 99.999% contains hardly any oxygen. A purity of 95% holds significantly more O2. Industrial gas quality refers to the presence of contaminants, more specifically, dust, oil, and water. Simply put, purity refers to the type of gas, while quality reflects its cleanliness. So which gas purity and quality do you need? Your application will tell you. Heat treatment of metals requires nitrogen of the highest purity. This would be a waste in food packaging, which is much less exacting in regard to purity. However, it does have stringent quality requirements, while heat treatment doesn't. Unlike purchased gas, on-site generation allows the customization of gas purity and quality to an application's needs to maximize production and cost efficiency. So I think I think quite you know we've used that quite a lot, Peter. I think quite a clear video, but just a a, a good takeaway is that you know anything that's less than five nines, I mean, isn't a dirty gas, not by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, it's the second pet peeve I have about um, terminology that's used in the in the uh, in the gas gen industry. You know, I think I think purity can often confuse customers, and they, and implies that it's not clean enough. And the reality is that it's, it's all about oxygen. What's the final oxygen le uh, levels in that the residual oxygen in that level in that gas that we're putting out into the process. Mm. And it has nothing to do with cleanliness. And in fact, uh, you know, uh, the nitrogen that we're producing at 95% is going to have the same ISO standards as it will at uh, five nights purity. So um, cleanliness is always, we're always at the high end of the cleanliness and then the purity is just the adjustable part for us. Absolutely. And then I think we have myth, uh, myth number two here just coming up. So of course this sounds like good, but CapEx is a big thing. I mean, yeah. and of course we're, we're all, we're all very aware at the moment of the cost of capital. And so, um, we're going to show some payback analysis at the moment, but something that's also changed uh, a lot in the on-site gas world over the last couple of years is basically the ability to really run it uh, like a utility and almost have a subscription service for your yeah. gas as opposed to buying equipment. Just tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, so uh, this is a program that's uh, maybe only a year, two years old for Atlas Copco, but gas plan is... Uh, just our version, as Paul said, of a utility. It's our ability to be able to own and operate equipment that is installed at the customer's location for it. And I think one of the benefits is a fixed cost. So there's no variation in the cost of the equipment and those contracts can run actually from uh, now uh, 24 months uh, up to um, uh, 60 months, so five years uh, with a fixed cost. So you do skirt a lot of uh, a lot of inflationary costs over the over the term of that uh, contract as well. Service is included, so the Atlas Copco service team is out there um, monitoring and uh, doing service on the equipment, so that customer is not responsible for any of that. Any major upsets that could potentially happen to the equipment, all covered under the warranty, so no out of pocket cost to the customer. Um, and as I said, we own the equipment. Um, and it's just a, a really easy way um, for a customer to purchase equipment, especially if they haven't uh, budgeted for a nitrogen program. But as we talked about earlier with uh, force majeures, allocation of product, maybe disruption in gas deliveries, all of a sudden something that wasn't really important to the customer, wasn't like on the radar, all of a sudden it becomes a real issue and something that has to be addressed. And if the customer hasn't, um, 
hasn't budgeted for capital, this is a way to get equipment in, get around some of those delivery issues that I just spoke of um, without any capital expense. Very clear. Um, and then let's have a little look at, at some of this analysis. So this is a real case story from a US based uh, a winery. Lots of numbers here, Peter. I know you know the application quite well. So just just talk us through. Uh, uh, yeah, talk us through this one. Yeah, big California winery. Um, and uh, we didn't plan to do it this way. But this happens to be a case where a customer has not budgeted capital for this project, but are having issues with their gas supply. And so engaged Atlas Copco to, um, to uh, look at a project for reducing um, their dependency on their, on their gas company. And as you can see in this, this is a, like I said, 24 seven operation. Um, their, uh, their costs go from $23,000 a month for delivered gas down to about eight and a half thousand dollars per month. So uh, significant savings and about uh, 1.2 year return on investment. So the investment is, is incredibly fast. Um, all the numbers here are, were very um, appealing to the customer. And, um, and the last thing is, you know, we look at um, our life cycle as being at least 15 years, it's most likely to be significantly longer than that, but that's a conservative estimate. This customer will save $2.6 million over the uh, first 15 years of um, operation of this equipment. So I know this was a, a quite a large one, Peter, but I mean, they were spending, you know, give or take 300,000 a year on nitrogen. I mean, is that, is, are, the, are those kind of numbers typical? I mean, it, it, it's a lot of money. I mean, when it comes to keep their product cost, it, it's a big ticket item. Big winery, big production, you know, big utility costs, you know, small winery, smaller uh, production, smaller costs, but uh, we have equipment that can handle all of it. So, um, you know, we welcome we welcome the opportunity to do to run case studies on it on anybody that's interested. Absolutely. Um, and and you just nice segue in, Peter. I mean, just talking ah. a little bit about the range, and I know certainly in in some of the the, the small wineries, vineyards, you're you really like these little wall mounted uh, uh, units that we talk about at the top. I mean, literally not don't even take any floor space because they, they just go up on the wall like a small cabinet. Yeah, they are. They're pretty, uh, they're pretty great um, for the small wineries. And I think a lot of uh, the lower production wineries have a impression that they're not, they're not big enough. They don't have, they don't use enough gas to, um, to um, account for gas generation, but we challenge you to, to get in touch with your local Atlas Copco rep and, and take a look at it. We have an incredibly um, deep breadth of, of products, uh, membrane and PSA and sizes. Like Paul said, everything from a small wall, wall mountable unit to uh, some extremely large equipment that will uh, take uh, cranes and um, some assembly to put together. But uh, whatever the size of the winery, we have a system that will um, cost effectively meet those production needs. Um, starting to wrap up now, lots yeah. of information, Peter, I know, but I mean, you know, we, we talk a little bit, if we just focus on one thing, you know, we talk about take control. So just explain to us what we mean there. Yeah, and I'm a control freak, so I like it, taking control of this utility. It's important to um, every facility that we talk to, wineries, of course, and other uh, manufacturing sites that use nitrogen. But uh, if you're relying um, specifically on your gas company to be able to deliver gas to you. Um, there are things inside and outside of their control that uh, can affect that, affect that delivery and the ability of, for a company to have this gas available to them. And so if you are generating this nitrogen um, at your location, then uh, you're taking control of, of this particular utility, this particular uh, important uh, production gas, and we're not relying on uh, the gas company to be able to deliver it, meaning, uh, you know, traffic jams, um, sick drivers, trucker, trucks going down, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's a thousand reasons why it can become difficult for gas to be delivered. Um, so you know, install a generator, um, and uh, that gives you, a, I think, a, a high level of control. Of control. 
Very clear. And just just talking a little bit on on some of these um, uh, extended benefits. Of course, there'll be some some Atlas Copco customers, some other customers out there as well. And um, uh, it's, it's all taken care of by the same service network when it comes to the equipment in the compressor room, Peter. Is that correct? It is. Yeah, we're one of the few, if the only one here in the states right now, that manufactures all the equipment with the exception of the pressure vessels which don't need service anyway. So we have a significantly large service group. That group um, can take care of any problems from uh, preventative maintenance to upsets. And as we talked about a little bit earlier, they're all connected to uh, SmartLink. So um, have access to um, pre-checks on equipment and things uh, of that nature to keep it up and running. All right. Well, yeah. um, and then, the the next steps, you know, so if someone's just thinking about it, I, I can perhaps take this one, Peter, we, we put together this website. So atlascopco.com forward slash BYOG, you know, uh, stolen a little bit, of course, from the old bring your own booze uh, acronym that was used. But it's just a very simple application where you answer questions, you know, you can see there the first one is it indoors or outdoors. It'll talk about how your needs change. There's just a few very small data points that we need on there. It then gets submitted to our application team. They can work on the initial scope for you. Um, and as was mentioned in a previous slide, you know, our number one rule, if, if we can't show you a, a payback, then then don't invest. I mean, if we can't show you a payback that fits for you, you know, we, we, we understand at the moment, you know, again, the cost of capital and uh, how important it is. So we really hope to, to show you a good saving. And this is the tool where, where, where you can start. Um, uh, a couple of other things, Peter, the website, we just got to mention there's there's case stories on there. There's nitrogen at Chablais there in France talking about a few applications. So there's various good resources that customers can access online to learn a little bit more, Peter. Yep. Yeah, great, great stuff online. Um, case studies are, all, are always interesting, but in, and they're probably a good place to get started. But ultimately, uh, if they're if you're curious and you have an interest in whether or not gas generation makes sense, um, BYOB, make a phone call and, uh, and or make a phone call and uh, we can do everything from budgetary uh, return on investments to full scale audits and, and get everything sorted. Very good. Just Peter, if I could, just before we hand back to George, it would take some questions from the chat. Um, a question that we get often, and I didn't ask it earlier, you talked about the high pressure cylinders, but people worry about the storage of gas from the fact that sometimes with these systems, they believe that if it's made on demand, as it were, then what happens if they run out? So would you mind just explaining again how we make a kind of filling system, if you like, so that it's not always produced on demand, you are storing some as well to make sure that you've got enough? Yeah, there's, uh, I mean, there's a lot of different ways that we can design a system. And always I will say that to, to Paul's point, uh, customers want to know. So maybe the, the biggest concern from our customer base or potential customer base is what happens if the equipment goes down? And there's a lot of different ways from uh, filling stations where we're, filling up uh, stationary cylinders um, to provide storage, to um, redundancy, to even tying in your, if you're planning on keeping your bulk system, to tying into that bulk system and using that as backup um, for our system. So there's a lot of ways for us to handle that. And um, you know, we have uh, many years of, I hate to say how many, but many years of experience in this industry uh, helping come up with the right solution uh, for each specific customer. All right. Well, thanks, Peter. Very, very informative uh, as always. Appreciate it. Bye. Take care now.